the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, man, God bless you. Hey, I hope you have a great day and a great week. Get ready to go for the, I hope you have a great weekend. It's coming up. And uh, it's always important to continue to continue in the word of God. And, and you know, I want, to, I want to, to make sure there's got to be a point where all of us realize we're not talking about a religion. Except for those who, that's, all, that's how they look at, you know, the world are gonna look at uh, Christianity as a religion with, with no, it's not declaring that it's real or not, it's just declaring the institution, the structure of uh, of our faith, but we're really talking about this is life. You know, if, if you receive Jesus Christ, your person wanted to say, you said this is life. You know, this is not a religion. Religion is doing something religiously over and over again. You, I guess you can, you can be religious and work out or eating a certain particular type of food. I don't know, we're doing something religiously. Uh, and the thing about it is that I, I even like the fact that in, as far as Christianity, Jesus continually did different things, uh, patterns of healing. Some he spoke healing. Some he, he uh, lay hands on for healing. Some he just said, will thou be made whole? And he spoke into it again. You know, uh, the one guy the man that was born blind, he, he made mud out of, you know, spit in the ground, made mud, and put on the man's eyes. Uh, one lady was healed just by touching him with his garment. So so when we talk about Jesus, the, the main thing that you talk about he did religiously was preach the kingdom of God. He said, I do what my father told me and gave me word on. You know what I mean? I mean, that's, and, and technically that's what he said, done in John 17, for us, he has I given them thy word. He, Jesus gave the word of God to us. Uh, <laughs> just like Moses, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, you know. Uh, and then there was a there was a point where uh, God wanted to speak directly to the children of Israel, and they chose to use Moses and said, Moses, you go talk to him. And you know, we'll cover some scriptures like that. Um, later in different ses sessions. But the point I'm just trying to say is, is, is not, it's is a way of life. And we have to get to that point of understanding it's a way of life. So we say stay in the word is live. The just shall live by faith. Faith is what? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, so, the, so we live by the word of God. You know, God created, he spoke this world, this universe into existence. He said, let there be. And then you're talking about from light to, to landmass, to waters, to the stars, all the things he said, let there be. You know, he spoke it into existence. Uh, so when we, when we look at uh, what the Bible is telling us, which is telling us how to live, not how to be religious, you know. Uh, but with that in mind, I, I want to talk about something about living as a Christian. Uh, and I also want to talk about living uh, based on the, 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 the way the world wants us to live. Uh, and, and the bigger thing I'm concerned about is how people uh, but even today's time, do do bad things to people. Well, you know, when I'm looking at what's going on with Ukraine and Russia, you you what you see, and then even now we're looking at what China wants to do. Is China going to side with the 
the aggressor or the child will stay neutral uh, or child will take side of what's right. I mean, does I think Professor China would know why we bombing out of bombing their country? Uh, so how do you feel about another sovereign nation uh, being attacked so brutally? Uh, had to make a decision. But for us, we let's look at that. Let's look at the 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 motivation for that. Let's look at and we and, and that the motivation has been used for hundreds and hundreds of years to our fellow mankind. But we really need to get a handle on that. Uh, before, today, let's, before we do that, let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for this opportunity to come to worship and praise your holy name. Father, you say when two or three are gathered in your name, you'll be in the midst of them. We now invite you to the present Holy Spirit. We also thank you, Father, that you say you'll never leave us nor forsake us. So even when we all may be divided, going different places, you say in your word that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. So thank you for always being with us as, as individuals or uh, as groups. Continue to lead us and guide us. The Holy Spirit teach us all things. Hallelujah. I thank you for what you're about to do. And I praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, one of the things I was looking at uh, when we were talking about the the motivation for Russia doing what it's doing to Ukraine. And then there's other people, even in this country, who have taken, there's people who have sided with Russia uh, and used different propaganda lies to, to uh, say that this other group should be supported. I, I don't know. I don't know where you come from, as far as that way of thinking, but this this applies to all people who died in hate, living in hate, raising their children in hate. I think you need to listen to this. Let me say it again. Those who have died in hate, those who are living in hate, those who are raising their children in hate, really need to listen to the scriptures today because the question is is it worth it see one of the things that i think as we get ready going to the study is and I, I pray that other men i pray i know ministries are teaching concerning life after this body expires i know i know they are i'm not sure whether they are teaching people the danger of hate. I know they teach about the fact there's a receiving Jesus Christ, the person who and the Savior, but I'm not sure if they're teaching the fact is that the Bible said that a tree is known by its fruit. And you can't bear good fruit to just people that you believe thinks like you or look like you. I don't care whether you're black or white or brown. If, if, if you only do that, and you know, the Bible talks about that. If you only do uh, what you consider loving somebody based on their denomination, based on the color of the skin, uh, based on their belief system, then, then you might need to, well, no, you don't might to, you need to go and read the Bible and say, what does it say about a murderer? What is said about someone who hate? And, and, and to ask your pastor, if I hate, if I hate, do I go to heaven? He, the, the, am I a Christian if I hate? Ask that question. Because I think it's important for you to be able to ask that question and for them to look in your eyes and say, no. If you hate, there's no hope until you receive Jesus Christ. So, so that's one of the things you need to know. You need to read this Bible for yourself. The Bible says, study and show yourself approved, rightly divide the word. You do that. Every last one of us is supposed to do that. Because the problem is, you study and show yourself approved unto God. Because if you're trying to get, and that's what has happened, and we have taken people to 
the point of destruction because we follow the mind of man and not the mindset of God. What is more important? I will submit to you that what's important is what does the word say concerning my behavior? Am I free to do and hate this group of people because they're white or this group of people because they're black or this group of people because they're brown? Is, 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 is there any justification? And that's what I want, I want to know, for you to know and analyze and judge for yourself, is it good to hate or is it better to love? And I submit to you, I get an answer, it's better to love. You know, we ain't actually to marry somebody that you don't like. What we tell you is to hate somebody is just not a good place to be when you leave this world. It's not a good place to raise your children to hate. And then they grow up and, and die in their hate. All the atrocities. Some people said they're the people that hate other people because of what people did. I, I submit to you that all those cruel, mean people, that if they died in their hate, they have no eternal life by them. And that's what the word of God is going to say. And we're going to use that today. So the question is, so my, my uh, title, if you look at this title, the question comes in is, what shall it profit a man, right, if he loses his soul? What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his soul? What, 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 what profit is that? What benefit? What benefit is, is it for you to teach your child to hate and then you try to tell them, what the Bible is saying that you're a Christian. When the Bible says a tree is known by its fruit, what good is it to perpetuate what I call stupidity in, 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 the, in the version of hate, whether you're black, white, or brown? What profits you to, to, to do that? What profits you to, to gain the whole world and it loses your soul? What profit, what benefit does it have for you to lose your soul for a status, a perceived status, a social construct, man's social construct, opposed to God, social construct. What, what profits you? And I think I want, I want you to chew on that and maybe we'll, we'll cover it again Sunday. But what profits you to gain the whole world and lose your, whole, lose your soul? You know, in Mark, Verse 8, starting verse 31. And he, Jesus, began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and, to, and be killed. And after three days, he rise, three days rise again. Amen. And he spent that saying openly, and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. See, now, Jesus is talking, and Peter's going to rebuke Jesus, and Jesus turned around and rebuke him. Jesus said, but when he turned about and looked on the disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, get thee behind me. Look at that. Satan, for thou savors not the things of God, but the things of men. And my question to many of you, when you sit there and, and, and teach your child the things of men, because that is, you got to understand, what is it that you willing to do to go opposite of the things of God toward the things of men? And see, I tell you, racism, whether it's black, white, or brown, because all both groups sometimes have these people who just hate people just for the mere color of their skin. What profits you that? What, what, what good is to savor the things or desire the things of, of man instead of the things of God? Those people who raise you and they, you have to ask yourself based on these words that are in the Bible. And I want you to read it for yourself. Please study for yourself. 
Where do you think those who did all those beatings and killing and looting? Where do you think, matter of fact, let's bring up to modern day time. What do you think about the tanks that's firing at public vi bi uh, buildings, killing men, women, and children for a reason of not defense, not retaliation, but because the people wouldn't bow to the wishes of a, another person. What those, and they're dying on the battlefield. And the and United Nations already talking about the facts of war crime. So those who don't die in the war on the battlefield, but are caught and put on trial. It's the world is telling you, we see what you're doing and we will hunt you down. And what are they going to say? I'll follow in orders. Well, you know, the legal. what profits anybody for that? that? That's something very important for you and me. He said, when he called the people unto him with his disciples. So it's interesting, the person that he just told, which was be supposed to be a disciple, he said, get behind me, Satan, because you saved the things of man. <laughs> Many of us will sit there and say, Lord, Lord, but we save the things of man. We, we need to understand. When we ask somebody, are you saved? You, that, that question is not just words. That's deeds and actions that goes with it. But he said in verse 35, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake in the gospel, the same shall save it. I'm just saying, when, when people who taught, generation to generation, who probably right now spending their tormented time, if they tormented people, abuse and rape people, especially in slavery, especially what's going on right now in Ukraine in 2022, For whosoever saved his life shall lose it, but whosoever loses life for my sake and the gospel shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the world, whole world, and loses his own soul? That's, that's important. And that's what this study, this is what the scriptures are saying. So all those people who died in their sin, what was the profit? They couldn't take nothing with them. Because none of us can take anything with us. So that means when we leave this body, we leave everything behind, everything that we possess, the body behind, the clothes behind, anything in your bank account behind, everything that you worked hard for and some of you cheated for. But the point is, everything that you have gained, you can't take with you. All those people, you know, like what I, I keep thinking about, uh, when the slave trade started. And I'm talking about the African that was guilty of selling Africans to, to Europeans and Europeans selling it to, to the, the, the New World or, or, or America or the or doing the sugarcane places and the Bahamas and stuff like that. What I'm saying is the, the atrocities that occurred, they gained money. They gained wealth, but what was it profit them in their soul? But that's what verse 36 said. What shall it profit the man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give? Listen to this now. You have to ask this question. Those who teach, those of you who teach your child to hate. Whether you teach your child to hate somebody that's white, or you teach somebody to teach somebody that's black or brown or because they're going to a different ethnic group? Uh, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And what parent wants their soul, their child's soul to be placed in danger? Because how are you going to balance the, the, the ability to act in exchange for that child's soul? We talk about that, don't we? We talk about the fact is that people don't like abortion. But why would you... What profit is to bring a child into this world and you teach that child to exchange his soul? Teach that child to die in hate. What, what, what profit is that? Where do you think you're going to get a benefit if you please man but no please God? I, 
I'm, I'm, I just want any of you to look at that and understand. He said, oh, verse 38, he said, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me, you know, my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. Jesus said, I'll be ashamed of this adulterous and sinful generation. So he basically said of the sin, if you married those people, think about it, y'all. Think about the people that's going on right now in 2022, bombing buildings with people in it, shooting, using tanks and shooting at buildings, not shooting at the enemy, but shooting at a building. And there's people in it. There's people that was in a theater and they blew up the building. What profit? What, 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 what? See, some of those people don't even believe, so therefore they believe that they, they have already given their soul over to destruction. But what I'm trying to figure out for a believer, those of you right now who teach a child to hate somebody just by the mere color of their skin, what, why would you exchange your child's soul for that? I just, I, you have to ask that question. You have to ask that question. I mean, we had recently had a trial in Georgia where, you know, three, three white men were actually convicted because they hated somebody because of the mere color of their skin. Because of the color of their skin, they hated the person enough to believe in a lie that they knew was a lie and thought it would be acceptable. And you know what? There was a period in our time when it was acceptable. Emmett Till, he was beaten badly by, by, by white men and I guess I heard the both was a black man that was with him too. And they beat this child to death. Didn't drown the child. Because of the mere color of the skin. And then somebody said, well, no, he, 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 he whistled up. For the mere color of the skin, I hope you. I hope you don't think that looking at somebody, uh, whistling at somebody, uh, is worthy of the type of death that that young man received. I don't think you do. My point is, though, so what is what purpose of raising a child to give you raising the child? See, we're already born in sin already, and then you gonna raise a child all the way up to high school <laughs> to hate people because of the mere color of their skin. Whether you're black or white. Some blacks will say, well, I hate people because of what they did to me. The, the point is, God said, forgive and let him, God, vengeance is the Lord. And those people who raised, who have parents, what, you better, you may want to sit there and ask them to repent. But if it didn't want to repent, I'm just telling you what profits you to gain the whole world and lose your soul, lose your child's soul, lose your own soul. Because accountability of judgment is not going to be based on people. You can look at a person to the left or right, but the Bible says even in Romans, when Romans 1 is talking about the fact is that people associate with people who do the things they do, but they already been given up for a reprobate mind. Do you have a reprobate mind that you want to be able to go with the flow of people instead of the flow of God? I, I, I really think you need to look at this. What profit? He said, Therefore, he said, who said in verse 38, who said therefore shall be ashamed of me in of my words and his adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he comes in his glory of his father with the holy angels. So you don't, you don't want to be in that situation. And, and, and look at this. There's nobody better, whether you're black, white, or brown. There's nobody better than another person because the Bible, read, I'm reading this in Genesis 1.26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. But you know what it doesn't say? 
let us create, let us create a black man in our image. Oh, it didn't say that, did it? It said, let us create man. No, oh, maybe it said, maybe it's really reading, let us create white man in our image. Oh, he didn't say that either, did it? No, let us create brown man in our image. He didn't say that either, did it? It, it, it? Whatever image he created for man to be in his image, it, he's not talking different layers of man. You know, some people say, they say well, it's an evolution. You, I, I hate to tell you that color of your skin, where you have more melon or less melon, does not give any type of evolution whatsoever. Because as far as I can tell, and I'm pretty sure you can tell, or you can look it up scientifically, melon is just, that's all it is. What does it do? It helps protect the sun rays. It has nothing to do with intellect, right? Everybody who's listening to me, before you pull off, it's not talking about it's not talking about any thought process in there. It doesn't dictate behavior or anything else. I know, you, I know you've been taught that, but I'm saying that's not true. So all of us have been made, every man, woman, have been created in the image of God. And when we sit there and hate man, we're basically hating God because we're all created in the image of God. It's not based on how much melon you skin or lack of melon it doesn't mean you're Asian or, or Native American or, or, or European or African or a combination of any other type of uh, ethnic group in this world. He created man. And you that is teaching another child, teaching your own child to hate another man that's made in the image of God, meaning the spirit man. If you're teaching somebody to do that, what do you think is happening to them? What do you think has happened to those who died in hate? You know what? You're not the judge. Neither am I. Oh, you need to listen. What does the word say? But the thing about a restaurant, so God created man in his own image. So the point is, since he ain't talking about uh, layers of men, and you know he's not talking about layers of men. I mean, you can sit there and lie to people. I mean, that's some people are good at that lying. Some people are real good at lying. But the reality is, God created man in his own image. He created him, every man in this earth and woman, are created in the image of God. Tell me otherwise. Read these scriptures for yourself. You tell me that he showed that there's an image, that there's a there's some other men out there. You know it's not, is it? Go ask your pastor. Pastor, there is a, a different people made. There's different people. There's only one image of God, and that's based on the melon of the skin, or or, or the or the or does the image of the skin, the outward appearance, the things of the flesh. That you know, the Bible says, "My flesh dwells no good thing." Tell, ask him, when God so created the world, when God created man in his own image, who was he talking about? And then if he tells you he was talking about one different, one ethnic group, one group with different melanin in the skin, tell him to show it to you in the Bible. Because we're reading the beginning. And if there was a caveat, it would be in the caveat. But it's not. It said that that black man was created in the image of God. That white man was created in the image of God. That brown man was created in the image of God. That Jew was made in the image of God. That cowboy was made in the image of God. That Netherlands, New Zealand, all those people, every man, woman on this earth are created in the image of God. We are, that's why he wants us to love one another. We all are created in his image. This is so God created man in his own image. The image of God created him, male and female created them. He even tell you there's the male and female part. So I got a gender in there that God has created in his image.